Okay, welcome uh, everybody to this uh, very first online dot show. So it's a bit different from what we do uh, regularly. Oh, uh, by the way, this, I'm Casper. My name is Alex. And so normally we'd be doing these uh, planetarium shows uh, right from dots. So that's the, the picture you see here uh, behind us. So it's the, the, the live planetarium that we have in, in Groningen. And as part of a uh, program uh, from the Kaptein Institute and also from the Center for Information Technology, both part of the uh, University of Groningen. We host uh, weekly planetarium shows on all kinds of astronomical topics. But well, given the pandemic, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go online uh, for now. Uh, so yeah, please let us know in the comments uh, where you like it. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to send them in the live chat. We have a couple of astronomers there hiding uh, who will answer your, uh, your questions happily. Um, yeah, so we'll be uh, talking about uh, mostly the Earth and Moon today. But uh, before we start, we'd like to uh, show you what kind of software we'll be using. Yeah, so uh, the software we're using is OpenSpace and it's an open source uh, data visualization uh, software, as you can see. Uh, and it's meant to uh, show you the universe and it has a lot of different data sets. Uh, you can download it at home. So if you're at home, go to uh, openspaceproject.com. Uh, we can link it in the, the chat maybe in a few uh, seconds. And then you can download it for either Windows or Mac. So you can use both of, or both of them to uh, get around the universe. And uh, yeah, it's funded by NASA and it also supports a lot of uh, data from NASA. So we use um, live uh, cloud uh, data to actually um, overlap the world. So it's actually all, um, all just recent. So we can go over to uh, videos because there's a lot of information on this website. And um, here you can have, uh, you can see a few of the live uh, presentations and streams, and you can also find tutorials uh, if you go to the YouTube channel. So we go to media and we go to YouTube. So you can also produce images. And if you go down, then we can find the open space tutorials over here. So you can use those uh, if you want any additional information. Uh, it's very helpful. It also helped us out. But um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, let's let's dive right into it. So uh, Alex and I already opened up uh, open space uh, before we started this show. Um, but yeah, as soon as you open up open space, this is about what you'll see. So you'll start here at Earth. Um, well, pretty well recognizable. You see the, the nighttime and the daytime. You see some stars in the background, uh, some, some galaxies actually behind there. Um, and, and there's these lines, and these lines, they're orbit lines. So this is, well, we'll get to this one in a second, and this is, the, uh, this is the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. Yeah, we can maybe zoom out a bit and show you another orbit. And yeah. The yeah. closest one would be from the Moon. Yeah, so, so if you want to zoom in and out with open space, you just click your right mouse button and you drag your mouse uh, towards you or away from you. And then you can, uh, well, you zoom out from her for you come closer to it. Well, as soon as you zoom out, you can actually see something, something interesting, which is this line around the Earth, uh, which is the orbit of the Moon. Um, yeah, this is again the orbit of the, of the Earth around the Sun. Um, now, one thing we can also do with the mouse is click the left mouse button, and as soon as you do that, you orbit. Yeah, pretty straightforward. The software is very easy to use, so don't be scared by uh, by all of this uh, this stuff. It's it's very easy to use. You don't need to be some gamer or or YouTube live streamer to do this. <laughs> Neither are we. <laughs> so let's check out this uh, weird. Um, a weird orbit we saw around the Earth. Maybe some of you can guess it, but uh, let's look uh, look for it. So we followed the trail and we check for where it stops uh, at its brightest. So this is where the object is. You can see that with Earth, it's the bright blue part of the dot. And it's currently over uh, India, if I'm correct. Yeah, it's India. So we zoom in. Yeah, and then we, as soon as we get closer to it, so we can see in the, in the back that the textures of the Earth are still loading. So it, open space downloads all of the textures live. So it will take some time to load uh, if you're if you're running this software. But yeah, it, it pretty quickly becomes becomes a sharp rendered image. 
So, uh, I guess most of you will be able to recognize it by now. Well, it's actually moving. It's really hard to track. So it's it's the International Space Station, of course. Uh, was quite recent in the news because uh, SpaceX launched their, their Dragon um, capsule towards it uh, successfully with two, uh, two astronauts. First time in a lot of years that American astronauts were actually launched from American soil. And the very first time it was by a commercial company. Yeah, so it's a pretty big thing uh, within, uh, well, within space traveling and we hope to see a lot more of it. Well, we can see the ISS is moving away from us as soon as we stop orbiting, then ISS moves out of view and that's because open space is uh, actually real time live software. So we can see the time here in the bottom. Um, it's, it's the current time and the ISS is of course orbiting Earth and it's doing so at a speed of about 25,000 kilometers per hour. So that's why it's moving out of our field of view. So let's uh, fly a bit away from it. So let's go to the uh, yeah the bright side of the Earth. This is the everything that's currently day, and you can see the clouds. And as we get closer, they slowly disappear. This is to make the overlay of the Earth so we can navigate uh, a bit easier. So you can now look at the clouds that are currently above uh, Europe. We can see Morocco down low. There's no cloud coverage there, or very little. And um, yeah, so we can zoom in to. Uh, for example, where we normally would do these shows. So we're gonna go to uh, the Netherlands, as I, hope, I think most of you are uh, looking from, but uh, yeah, you can visit it at any time. Yeah, so as soon as we come closer, we go start to go to the north of the Netherlands. So I think most of you recognize this. It's loading these textures, as I, as I said before, but it's pretty quick. So it's, it's, it's a lot like Google Maps now, of course. Um, but this software has, has a lot more uh, potential, which we'll show you in a bit. Um, so yeah, here we're in. So this is the center of Groningen. I think most of you will recognize it. So the, the inner city center, uh, the Northern Plansoen, as we call it. Yeah, we see the station below. Yeah, station down there. And then here's our little dome right there. So yeah, we're not sure yet when we'll be hosting uh, planetarium shows again. Uh, from DOT, uh, but for now it will be online, um, so we'll, we'll say goodbye uh, to DOT, we can just wave there for a bit. <laughs> yeah, and we'll slowly move away from Groningen again, because we want to show you some other things uh, that uh, open space does, because um, one thing that we don't really have in the Netherlands is a lot of uh, mountains, so what we're going to do, we're going to see a mountain range and look at some other uh, interesting things near the mountain ranges. Yeah, so I see there's actually a question in the chat. Is this real life footage of Earth? So it's it's not actually real life footage. So they're not like um, satellites observing the Earth uh, lifetime. So these pictures have been made in the past, uh, but the pictures are all pretty recent. So most of the satellite imagery um, will be from like the last year or so, but you won't actually see moving, well, people moving around on the streets. Um, that's what you mean. So. By now we've zoomed in on the uh, the western coast of South America. I'll zoom out a bit before we dive into it. So here we see Chile, uh, then to the right, to the east is Argentina. We have Bolivia up here, then Colombia is more to the north there. We have Peru, and all of this is Brazil, basically. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this area over here, which is mostly Chile, but also partly Bolivia, um, is a very interesting location. Uh, not only geologically, but also in terms of astronomy. And that's because this area here, it's called the Atacama Desert, is the driest place on Earth, which makes it a pretty decent place to put telescopes. Uh, possibly even the best location. So what I'd like to zoom into is, is actually this area over here, actually close to it. So this is... Uh, um, oh, so this is, not, uh, this is not natural, it's actually man-made uh, so to say uh, i think this is uh this is a place where they harvest cobalt from the ground so they pump up water a very high cobalt percent uh, well, very high percentage of cobalt in the water and they let it dry out and they use it for uh, all kinds of batteries uh, for example all these teslas that you, you see driving around 
And just to the south of it, along this mountain ridge over here, there's something interesting to see. So, the difficult thing about open space is that it doesn't have like a search button. So we can't search for exact locations, but Alex and I practiced this a bit beforehand. It takes a while, but you'll get used to it. <laughs> and we see this very interesting feature here at the surface. And it's actually a crater. So I guess most of, uh, well, at least some of you already recognize the circular shape of it. Um, yeah, this is what's left over when a crater hits Earth and then a lot of years pass by, thousands to millions of years. And then, uh, and then erosion basically uh, well, fades this, uh, this, sharp, uh, this sharp landscape. One other thing that we can do in open space is press the control button and then use your left mouse button and drag upwards. And that will, what we'll see is actually that the landscape in open space is 3D. So you see these mountain ridges here in the back. And if we zoom in a bit, we can see that most of these uh, these terrains are actually all 3D. So there are a lot of uh, travel restrictions uh, nowadays uh, because of the pandemic. So you won't really be able to travel a lot, but I guarantee you, if you install this software, you never need to travel again. So you can just stay at home and explore the world. <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some other interesting places. Um, one other thing we wanted to highlight is how these uh, mountain ridges actually evolved. Um, it happens because of the uh, ocean plate actually um, uh, getting below the um, land plate. And that makes, uh, um, yeah, then the, the, the ocean plate melts and the lava comes up and that creates a mountain ridge also for canoes. Yeah. So uh, some of the things you hear, uh, can see here are actually volcanoes. Yeah, so that's very interesting about this, uh, this region here in the Andes, uh, in the Atacama Desert, is that there are a lot of volcanoes here. So most of these, these peaks that you'll see here are actually volcanoes. Um, also a lot of active volcanoes. So we move a bit to the north of this, uh, of this side here. We move along the Andes here. Um, well, actually, I think we already near it, yeah. So a bit more to the north over here, we get to this plateau here in between these volcanoes and it's called the Chachnantur Plateau. And the Chachnantur Plateau is home to the world's highest observatory. It's the, uh, the ALMA telescope. It stands for Atacama Large Millimeter Array. Let's press control again to view a bit more from, uh, from up here. So it's, it's right over here. And this telescope is actually one telescope, but it's, uh, it's a lot of telescopes together. Let's zoom in a bit. And in open space, we can see our current altitude to the top left. It's so we're at an altitude of about 10 kilometers. Uh, Alma telescope is a bit lower than that, but it's still at a height of uh, over five kilometers. Uh, and I'm guessing there are some astronomers actually watching our stream right now. And some of these astronomers have probably been here to, to Alma, with some engineers, and they will confirm that it is quite difficult to breathe up here. So you have about 50% of the oxygen at this altitude of five kilometers, um, which makes it a pretty harsh environment, but actually a very nice place for telescopes. Um, let's move down the mountain ridge a bit. We follow the path that you need to take to get to Alma. And if we go down here, so we're now dropping in altitude. So we started off at, at five kilometers, but somewhere halfway the mountain ridge, right over here, we get to the OSF. I'm actually not sure if that's the OSF. Or it might even be for, yeah, I think this is the OSF. So this is called the operation support facility and they can control the telescope from down here and this is at a way way more reasonable altitude of about two and a half kilometers uh, which makes it a, a way more pleasant place to work can you try to show the telescope from here or at least the plateau yeah so just go back to the telescope up here and the telescopes uh, are pretty small but they work together so if we zoom in, 
you can see all the tiny telescopes over here. Just stop moving for a second. You can see a lot of tiny telescopes and they can move these telescopes around all these different locations all over the plateau. And the telescopes basically work together as one big telescope. We call it an interferometer. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty high tech, but what it essentially does, it creates a telescope which has a resolution, uh, which is similar to a telescope the size of the entire plateau. So you can look at way uh, smaller objects or objects that are way further out into the universe. So yeah, pretty exotic location for a telescope, but it's necessary uh, to look at Earth. I think we've had enough of Earth uh, for now. Yeah, so let's go up. Uh, you can see the atmosphere for a bit. I think that's uh, computer generated. Uh, they kind of uh, try to simulate how it would look at that height. So we zoom out and um, for now it's been looking like a very, very um, uh, interesting sort of Google Earth, but we want to show uh, what it can do uh, besides that. So we're going to head to some other places. And um, for today, uh, that is the um, the moon. Yeah, so we'll stay pretty close to home. Uh, maybe for future shows, we'll, uh, we'll go to all kinds of different places because open space, uh, it basically can show you any, any astronomical data set that has been uh, well, converted to work with open space. And actually astronomers all around the globe are working on putting, on, putting in new data into open space. So yeah. it's partially funded by NASA. And so it's, it's pretty scientific software actually. So something that we can show right now is um, how the time works. We got a question about uh, why the, the date said the 15th of uh, June instead of the 16th. Well, um, that's because we can change the time. Uh, so let's click on the real time uh, stamp over there. And you can see different options. You can change the date, so you can set it to a specific point, uh, or you can do the simulated speed. So what we can do is we can set the simulated speed to, um, say, 5,000 seconds a second, or one day a second. Yeah. So um, you can either click here, or you can drag it. So as soon as you drag it, then you speed up time. And as soon as we do that... oh. We have to keep it there. Yeah. If not, then we have to uh, uh, type it in the part upstairs. Yeah. So we can see ISS orbiting. It orbits in about one and a half hours, 90 minutes. Uh, well, now it does so in uh, about a second or so. So we're moving a lot faster. We can see the Earth rotating around its own axis. Um, and as soon as I let go, we go back to normal speed. Yeah, so we can uh, use this to uh, sort of, um, if we show you the whole solar system, we can go to different dates to check where the planets are. Um, you can maybe go to a, um, a time zone, a time you know that there was a, um, a solar uh, solar eclipse, and you can check out how it looks from uh, different places on Earth. Uh, so that's how the time works. And then we'll go to the settings next to it, and that's uh, the focus. And the focus is where we're looking at. So now we're looking at the center of the Earth. But we can also uh, do different things. You can do it in the search function, but the moon is uh, a pretty obvious one, so we can just click it over there. So what it does, it switches its focus to the center of the moon, and if we, um, yeah, if we do right mouse button and uh, yeah, so we use the we use the mouse again to zoom in just as we did before, and as soon as we get to the earth, we can see it's mostly black, and that's because most of it is in the shade. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, but we can orbit the Earth of the Moon, so we can also go to the light side. Yeah, so something that we have to say is that that is not the dark side of the Moon, because there's a shadow there. Um, it's actually the far part of the Moon, so if you get both the Earth and the Moon uh, into view, then that is the uh, dark side of the Moon, because we can't see it from the Earth. So um, there is light coming from the Sun that is reaching it, but the far side, uh, you'll probably never see unless you go into space uh, because um, every time the um, moon makes a rotation around earth uh, the moon also rotates once so there's always the same side of the moon pointing towards earth yeah. so just for visualization if you're here on the earth you're always looking to the other side never to this side uh, but we can show this side in open space because probes and satellites and all kinds of observatories have flown around the moon 
and make pictures of the far side of it. Well, for now, we'll just go back to the other side. And we actually want to move time uh, backwards a bit. And as soon as we do that, the moon is orbiting around the Earth. And it's also rotating at exactly the same speed, more or less. And now that we get close to about the 6th of June, if some of you recall, around about the 6th of June was actually more or less a full moon. So if we're now looking to the day side of the moon, so the light side, we're seeing the moon as we would be able to see it from Earth uh, during a full moon. And now we see a lot more interesting features. Uh, we, for example, see these darker areas over here, which are remainders from volcanic activity billions of years ago. Um, so it's basically dried up lava, um, quickly put. Uh, so the inside of the moon um, is actually all solid nowadays, so it's, it's just a giant rock in space. Uh, but in the past, there was geological activity and there was uh, magma coming up, and volcanoes, and all these kinds of things. Something else that we can see um, are a lot of impact craters. We've shown you one on Earth and it's uh, hard to see because of all the different types of erosion that we have on Earth. But here on the moon, you can see pretty much all the uh, craters that were there when uh, the surface of the moon cooled. So you can really see how many meteors have struck it. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, very quickly we can see that there are a lot craters. Uh, let's zoom into some of the bigger ones over here. I'm gonna stop motion for now just for a bit. So again it needs to load the textures but if we press control again we can see that even here on the moon this uh, surface is actually in 3D. So you can really see that this big meteorite that uh, struck the moon here it has blown these ridges away um, it was quite a, quite a big impact because these meteorites, they come at the moon at a speed of thousands of kilometers per hour, up to, uh, up to 100,000 kilometers an hour, uh, depending on where they're from. Um, and when they impact, they destroy a lot of the area around it. So the meteorite is not the size of the crater, it's way smaller actually, because of the, the big impact, the big explosion, um, it leaves these craters. And as Alex said, there's, there's no erosion on the moon. So these craters, they stay there forever. Whereas on the Earth, we also get these impacts, but they don't remain visible for a very long time. Yeah, something also that's very interesting is that um, because of the atmosphere, a lot of them are blocked. Uh, smaller meteorites that may hit the moon uh, do not hit the surface of the Earth because they burn up in the atmosphere. And um, yeah, that also protects us from uh, from some collisions, except for very big ones. Yeah. And uh, so these craters, you, can, you can't really observe them with the naked eye um, because they're just too, too tiny to see. Uh, but if you have a very simple telescope or some binoculars at home, you can already see uh, these craters in quite a lot of detail. And actually the best time to observe the moon is when it's not full moon but when it's like half moon or quarter moon because then you can see the edge of the shadow and you can get longer shadows um, near the craters and i think we've come up to a pretty interesting part of the moon um, because i think this is uh, close to the apollo 11 apollo 11 landing site back in 1969 so uh, buzz aldrin neil armstrong went there it's already quite some time ago well over 50 years ago um, and yeah, maybe we'll return back to the moon once again. Um, all of the Apollo missions went to this side of the moon, the, the side that we can see from Earth, so that they could have direct communication uh, from Earth towards, uh, well, towards the moon. Um, because they didn't have like satellites orbiting the moon with which they could communicate to the far side. Um, but nowadays they've, they've, they've also sent probes to the other side. Um, yeah, and I think that was, uh, that was close to, uh, to it. So yeah. yeah, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Um, there will be a Zoom uh, session afterwards and 
the link will be sent in the, uh, the YouTube live chat. So if you want to ask personal questions about the shows, uh, please feel free to join that as well. Uh, also, don't forget to like the page uh, and subscribe because of uh, upcoming um, uh, videos. We don't uh, know how many of these shows we're planning because we don't know um, how long it takes for us to get back. But if you are interested, we can uh, try to come up with a few more. So that's very uh, welcome. So um, subscribe to show the support. Yeah, like the video. Uh, so this video will also be available afterwards uh, if you want to review it or want to send it to your friends. Uh, it will stay online. Um, well, thank you all for uh, for joining. Yeah. And uh, we hope to uh, to see you next time. See ya. See ya.